Hey everybody, Ed Holman, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today is going to be a really cool video. I've got the Fozzy V3 monoblock amplifiers here. And believe it or not, these things are actually really good. I'm very impressed with them. Very impressed with them. So sit back, relax. I'm going to talk about how cool these little devices are. Old guy sitting in his chair, silver beard and thinning hair, talking about the best sound gear, making music crystal clear. Old guy hi-fi telling tales, dusty apps and vintage sales, turn it up and feel the sound, magic in the gear he's found. So the Fozzy Audio V3 monoblocks are actually a really cool product. I was quite taken with them. We're going to talk about that more. This is kind of an evolution of the V3 stereo amp that they came out with a while ago. And what they everybody loved that amp and said, boy, it'd be great if it was mono. We didn't have a volume control on it. Or you could use the stereo version in mono, but you had a volume control for each one. So they eliminated all that, but then they put some additional technology in it. So like the V3 stereo amp, it does use the Texas Instruments 3255 amp chip but now you've got one chip per channel. So you've got a lot more power and really what you get is a lot more headroom and dynamic range with it. Um, it is rated into, you know, up to a two ohm load. Fozzy Audio says with the, 40, the supplied 48 volt five amp power supply, it will do 240 watts into four ohms. Maybe, and it's probably at 1% distortion, which is fine. You probably wouldn't hear that anyway. But the folks at Audio Science Review went ahead and measured it. And let's call it a legitimate 100 watts into 8 ohms, and I feel like that's very accurate because I felt like it had, was truly 100 watts and had good dynamic headroom and everything else. Um, and I was quite taken with it. Frequency response is 10 hertz to 30,000. Uh, again, it comes with a 48 volt 5 amp power supply. One of the things I love about it is on the front panel, and I'll show you a close up of it. Obviously, you've got to choose your input RCA or XLR, and we'll look at the back in a second. But on the power switch, what I love is there in the center, there is an auto signal sensing setting. So it idles after a few minutes of not detecting any signal, it'll shut down. The minute it de detects a signal, turns on, or you can have it on all the time. As far as it goes into and goes out, is, and again, I'll show a picture very, very simple RCA in. You have uh, XLR balanced XLR or quarter inch TRS connector in the center of it and just your speaker binding post and that's really it. So Fozzy Audio, like I said, it's an evolution of the V3 stereo amp, uses the same chip but again one chip per channel now and I think that makes a big big difference. But Fozzy Audio is quite proud of this technology they called PFFB, Post Filter Feedback Technology. Now in the past most Class D amps and certainly to my ear sounded really harsh and strident and just not very good. Well, it was. It turns out, and I found out reading the material on this, that it was based on load dependence. So the the more impedance, the lower the impedance, the harder the amp was working, the more harsh it got. Well, with this PFFB post filter feedback technology, it eliminates that load dependence harshness, and it makes the Class D sound clean. And I'll tell you, it does. And we're going to talk about that more in the summary. Um, it uses premium internal components. So we're going to open it up and you'll see inside. Um, it does have really kind of a cool advanced cooling system. The and I can't really show you even when we go inside is that there's a heat sink here on the inside of the chassis and that's what those two screws are. And then the TI, the T Texas Instruments chip is there and then there's a heat transfer paste on it as well. And so it radiates its heat throughout the entire chassis, but it has these side, and I think it's kind of cool with the orange gr grilling in the back or grill in the back, has these side vents to help pr improve airflow. They, they get warm, I'll tell you, they do get warm when you crank on them, but they never got too hot to touch and I never felt like it was excessively warm. So we're gonna crack them open, take a look inside because you can swap the app amps. Now, hopefully if you're enjoying the video, you'll consider giving me a like and a subscribe. And if you wish to support the channel, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the video window and there will be membership links in the pinned comment and in the video description. So let me reconfigure, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna look at the op amps. So after you move the, remove the two screws on the back on either side, the face plate comes off and you'll see these legs. That's where the screws go on the inside. Once you've done that, then you can push the circuit board out the back 
and it slides right out. Let me set that aside. And this is actually a pretty well laid out device. And I'll put some close up pictures in. These are actually Nichicon capacitors. All the smaller caps, they're all Elna, and those are really high quality. And then, of course, you've got Wema coupling capacitors. So, really good parts inside, and there's a bunch of stuff that we can mess around with. So, there is swappable op amps inside the unit. Now, the question becomes is what fits? Well, any of your standard op amps do. Now, you've heard me harp on this before. Get yourself the dip eight sockets. They're really inexpensive. Mount your, your op amps in there before you go to insert them in, and you'll see these, the pins will bend so easy. Um, and I'm not gonna actually roll these out right now, but yes, Sparco's 3602s fit. Texas Instruments OPA 1656s fit, fit. And also all of the other ones, Burr Brown 2134s, 2106s, and I even have some analog devices, uh, op amps there, and Burson. The V5s actually will fit in there. I haven't tested it with the V5s yet. I will, and when I come back to do the summary, I'll let you know my thoughts on it. But super easy to swap op amps. Now, before anybody asks the question, I'm gonna go and, and head it off right now. And no, let me get it out, son of a gun. No, a 2509 <laughs> won't fit in there at all. Not even a little bit. So obviously 3602s from Sparkos, excellent fit, no problem. Plenty of space for those. Anyway, so that's the inside of the Fozzy Audio V3 mono blocks and swapping op amps, even though I'm not gonna do it right now. I will and I'll let you know my thoughts on it. So let's button this back up. I'm gonna go do some listening with the op amps in it and then I'm gonna come back and I'll give you a summary of what I thought. So how did I get along with the little Fozzy V3 monoblocks? Actually, I got along quite well. I enjoyed my time with them a lot. And if you enjoy your time with me, hopefully you'd consider giving me a like and a subscribe. So how did I use these? Oh, full disclosure, first off, I only had enough uh, TI OPA 1656s to roll op amps because you need three per chassis. And I there are two, maybe two on the balance side and one on the single ended input side. I don't know. Um, I couldn't find out there was no material in the owner's manual or anything like that. So there are three op amps. I, I rolled all three um, and I only used the 1656s because that's the only ones I had enough of. And 90% of the time I used the stock TI 55, 5532s and it sounded good. And I'll talk a little bit about the differences with the, with the op amps in just a moment. So I did put these in the big room and I did run the ELAC DBR62s on them using a Sparkos Gemini as a headphone amp as the preamp and a Gishelli J2S. So I gave it good, good front end to drive and they did really good. They, the ELACs aren't the easiest thing in the world to drive and this had plenty of power, plenty of dynamics, a good clear sound quality. I thought, you know, I was a skeptic about class D amplifiers up until recently. And, you know, I, I have the Evo Cambridge Evo 150, which uses a, a Hypex Encore. I mean, a very expensive class D. These did a really good job. Is it the same? No, but I'll tell you what, for 140 bucks or 280 bucks for the pair, they're pretty good. Let's talk about how they sound though. Um, in the big system, again, they acquitted themselves quite well. Good bass, good drive, plenty of dynamics. Um, I put them mostly on my desktop here, running my vintage Kef C25s, which are not easy to drive at all. It's forum load, and I think they're around 84 dB sensitive. Um, I don't remember exactly, but they're not an easy load, and these did great. Again, I used the same Sparkos Gemini uh, headphone amp and Gishelli DAC on my desktop. So I use this recording from Ricardo Muti of uh, Scheherazade with the Philadelphia Philharmonic. And Rimsky Korsakov Scheherazade is a lot of strings, a lot of mass strings. There's a lot of solos, violin solos, and then crescendos with lots of strings. And I use, I like this recording because massed strings can be hard for some gear to resolve. It gets confused and congested sounding. These acquitted themselves well. I felt that the strings in the mid-range was great. Again, it goes along very, very quiet, and then there's big crescendos. This had plenty of dynamic power for it. Um, I, again, I think legitimately consider these to be a really good 100 watt, uh, per, 100 watt per unit uh, amplifier with good headroom. Um, you know, it can probably do more, but I think in, with music, they can do, they do really, really well. Just think about it that way. To get a little more bass response, I use this recording from Little People called Mickey Mouse Operation. And it's kind of acid jazz. It's kind of that 
uh, not downbeat, but it's it, it it's very interesting sort of music. It's it's not really house music. Maybe it's not ambient. It's not techno. It's kind of in between, um, and really good. Good recording. Good bass. Good. Uh, instrumentation all the way through it again a well-recorded studio album and these did really good on the bass on the low end they got the caps moving and that's not easy because they're a sealed box um, so plenty of power plenty of dynamics and good clean sound now to get a really good handle on the mid-range i use this recording from carolyn no called carolyn no um, it's a german couple they're married he he, he is a gr they are both great composers he's a great multi-instrumentalist she has got a tremendous voice and these acquitted themselves again really well. Um, the only time I had an issue at all with the sound quality was in the big room when I was pushing them hard, um, you know, 85 dB peaks. It started to compress a little bit, but I'll tell you what, it, it, they sounded really good. Very neutral, very clean, good detail. You know, it. listen, at $280, I'm not sure you could find a better amp combination or better amp than these. They sounded that good. Um, I think on a desktop system, second system, even a starter system with a good pair of speakers like the, you know, the ELAC, ELAC BS41s or the ELAC Debut 3.0s or the Sony SSCS5s or maybe some of the Mica series speakers, these would do a good job because they've got the power to drive those difficult small uh, form factor speakers. And I thought they sounded great. They threw a good image on the desktop. Um, it was very clean, very detailed. Um, is this, is this the last word? Is this a giant killer? You know what it is when it comes to, if you were to compare this with a nice DAC with a preamp built into it for a digital front end against any of the entry level stereo receivers or stereo integrated amplifiers out there up to 500 or maybe $600, I would take the Fozzy V3 monos over that. Um, they had plenty of power, plenty of drive. They had loads of headroom. I didn't feel like they were being stressed until I really cranked on them. And I was cranking on them with some very difficult to drive speakers. I, I just thought they did an excellent job. I'm very, very pleased with the quality. Um, again, with the 1656s, I didn't detect a huge difference in sound. Maybe a little better drive in the low end. But really, it was very, very subtle. And while I was listening to it with the stock op amps, I really didn't have this burning desire to change anything. I thought I was very pleased with it, very satisfied with the sound quality. So Fozzy V3 Monos, if you're looking for a good starter system, a second system, a very compact, that's another thing I really like about these is they're really compact. I also love the auto sensing function. That's really, really cool. Um, I use that a lot on the desktop because I'll just leave them on when I start my, uh, you know, Weem or when I'm running something from the laptop, they just fire up and they're there. So really cool piece. Anyway, that's the Fozzy V3 monos. They get a recommendation from me, no question about it. And hopefully I can get a recommendation from you and you'll give me a like and a subscribe. And if you wish to support the channel, there is a thank you button in the bottom of the video window. And also in the pinned comment and in the video description are links to join the channel if you wish. There will be links to buy this. Now there are special, there's a special deal going until the 8th of October, 2024 on these. And I will provide links in the video description. If you wanna get some, I would appreciate it if you use those links, but that'll get you that additional discount. Um, so keep that in mind. Also in the video description are other Amazon uh, affiliate links. There are my playlists. You guys have been done a great job about sending me playlists. Continue to do so. Please check out those playlists. Please comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're looking for a little system like this. Let me know what your feelings are about Class D. Let me know what you think about the music I, I recommend or I use to review stuff. Um, all of those things. Uh, everyone knows I answer the comments. Let's please keep it professional, nice, and, uh, and kind, as they say. Um, Let's see, like, subscribe, comment. If you want, follow me on Instagram. I'm at Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. It's now your job to sit back, relax, and maybe listen to some really good music on some really compact little powerhouse monoplocks from Fozzy Audio. Thanks so very much for your time. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Beep, beep.